Day 89, Thursday, February 2nd, Exodus 12. Exodus 12 1 to 51 NKJV Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months, it shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons, according to each man's need you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats, now you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning. And what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it, with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So this day shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation, and on the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation for you. No manner of work shall be done on them, but that which everyone must eat, that only may be prepared by you. So you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for on this same day I will have brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations as an everlasting ordinance. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread, until the twenty-first day of the month at evening. For seven days no leaven shall be found in your houses, since whoever eats what is leavened, that same person shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is a stranger or a native of the land. You shall eat nothing leavened, in all your dwellings you shall eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lambs for yourselves according to your families, and kill the Passover lamb. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning, for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. And you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. It will come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord will give you, just as he promised, that you shall keep this service. And it shall be, when your children say to you, What do you mean by this service? That you shall say, It is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our households. So the people bowed their heads and worshipped. Then the children of Israel went away and did so, just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. 
And it came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of livestock. So Pharaoh rose in the night, he, all his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Then he called for Moses and Aaron by night, and said, Rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord as you have said. Also take your flocks and your herds, as you have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Egyptians urged the people, that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, We shall all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, having their kneading bowls bound up and their clothes on their shoulders. Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and they had asked from the Egyptians articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they granted them what they requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. Then the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth, about six hundred thousand men on foot, besides children. A mixed multitude went up with them also, and flocks and herds, a great deal of livestock. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they had brought out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were driven out of Egypt and could not wait, nor had they prepared provisions for themselves. Now the sojourn of the children of Israel who lived in Egypt was four hundred and thirty years, and it came to pass at the end of the four hundred and thirty years, on that very same day, it came to pass that all the armies of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night of solemn observance to the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord, a solemn observance for all the children of Israel throughout their generations. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover, no foreigner shall eat it. But every man's servant who is bought for money, when you have circumcised him, then he may eat it. A sojourner and a hired servant shall not eat it. In one house it shall be eaten, you shall not carry any of the flesh outside the house nor shall you break one of its bones. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it, and when a stranger, dwells with you and wants to keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it, and he shall be as a native of the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat it. One law shall be for the native born and for the stranger who dwells among you. Thus all the children of Israel did, as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. And it came to pass, on that very same day, that the Lord brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt according to their armies. Daily Deep Dive, the UCG reading plan states, God now gives specific instructions to the Israelites in preparation for the final plague to come upon Egypt. It was necessary to record God's word, as his instructions were to be repeated each year. This was to be a reminder of God's powerful and miraculous intervention among his people. And it was to foreshadow the supreme sacrifice of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who would eventually come to offer his unblemished life as the sacrifice for the sins of all mankind. On the tenth day of what God declared to be the first month of the year, Exodus 12 2, the Hebrew month Abib, see Exodus 13 4, which occurred in the spring, the Israelites were to select an unblemished yearling of the sheep or goats. They were to keep it up until the fourteenth of the month. In the twilight portion of the evening that began the fourteenth day, literally between the two evenings, which, though disputed, is commonly understood to mean between sundown and darkness, they were to kill the lamb or kid and prepare it according to the specific instructions God gave them. The Passover consisted of the events that took place during the course of the night and into the following morning. What exactly took place? 1. The lamb was killed. 2. 
Its blood was put on the entrances of the houses. 3. The lamb was roasted. 4. The Israelites ate it with solemnity and in a state of preparedness, knowing that the events of the next day would entail much organization and travel. 5. The children were to be specifically taught the meaning of these events. 6. None were to go out of their houses until the morning. 7. At midnight, the Lord would pass over the homes and, with the evidence of the blood on the entrances, He would spare the firstborn males of man and animals within from death, males implied from the command in Exodus 13 12-15. 8. What remained of the sacrifice was to be burned. When morning came on the 14th, the Israelites, scattered all over the land of Goshen, faced the daunting challenge of gathering themselves and all their belongings and driving their livestock to the departure point of Ramesses. For many this required a journey of more than 20 miles, which would have taken all day. We read that there were approximately 600,000 men, besides children, a mixed multitude, those who were not Israelite, and a great number of livestock so we have possibly more than 3 million people besides animals that collectively organized and left from Ramesses by night, under a full moon, being the beginning of the 15th day. It was certainly a night to be observed, and it began the days of unleavened bread. Incidentally, the days of unleavened bread beginning the 14th day of the month at evening in Exodus 12:18 is shown by other verses such as Leviticus 23:6 to mean the end of 14th and thus the beginning of the 15th as evening or sundown can apply to the beginning or end of a day depending on the context see Leviticus 23:32 where the ninth day of the month at evening clearly means the beginning of the 10th verse 27 for the Feast of Unleavened Bread the Israelites were to dispose of any leavened bread or leavening agent, for them this meant yeast, and eat unleavened bread instead. The sobering events of the previous evening were embedded in their minds as so many people and animals died throughout the land. Of course, it was also a joyous time. For, finally, after their hopes had risen and fallen so many times, the promise that God had spoken to the Israelites through Moses was actually happening. Families that had only known oppression and slavery were now free. And, verse 3 and 6, why were they to select the lamb on the tenth and keep it until the fourteenth at twilight? The tenth day is the month is the day that is believed that Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem to give his life as the Passover lamb. Compare John 12:1. 12 and 13. There are other ideas about why the lamb was selected on the 10th and held until the 14th, but I'm unaware of any that is stated or confirmed with the Bible. If you have questions about whether the Passover was eaten on the night of the 14th or 15th, you can read the 45-page UCG study paper on this topic at. Additionally, if anyone would like to do a deep dive into the study of why we teach that the Passover lamb was to be killed after sunset but before dark, you can read a short two-page study paper on that topic as well at. Verse 5, As this lamb represented our great Savior Jesus Christ, it was a lamb to be without any blemish, picturing Christ being without sin. Verse 13, Through this lamb's blood, Israel was spared from death, just as through the Lamb Jesus Christ's blood, we each have been spared from death. Verse 15, here is another short two-page study paper on the topic of unleavened bread. Verse 22, the Israelites are told to take a bunch of hyssop. The Hebrew word for bunch means band or binding and the Hebrew word for hyssop means a plant used for medicinal and religious purposes. Adam Clark's commentary adds the following depth. The original word azab has been variously translated musk, rosemary, polypity of the wall, mint, origanum, marjoram, and hyssop. The latter seems to be the most proper. Parkhurst says it is named from its detersive and cleansing qualities, whence it was used in sprinkling the blood of the Pascal lamb 
in cleansing the leprosy, Lev underscore 14 to 4, Lev underscore 14 to 6, Lev underscore 1451, Lev underscore 1452, in composing the water of purification, Num underscore 19 to 6, and sprinkling it, Num underscore 1918. It was a type of the purifying virtue of the bitter sufferings of Christ, and it is plain, from PSA underscore 51 to 7, that the psalmist understood its meaning. Among botanists hyssop is described as a genus of the gymnospermia, naked seeded, order, belonging to the didynamia class of plants. It has under shrubby, low, bushy stalks, growing a foot and a half high, small, spear, shaped, close sitting, opposite leaves, with several smaller ones rising from the same joint, and all the stalks and branches terminated by erect, world spikes of flowers of different colors, in the varieties of the plant. The leaves have an aromatic smell, and a warm pungent taste. The leaves of this plant are particularly recommended in humoral asthmas, and other disorders of the breast and lungs, and greatly promote expectoration. Its medicinal qualities were probably the reason why this plant was so particularly recommended in the scriptures. Verse 26, God specifically, by design, provides us wonderful teaching moments along the way and throughout time to ensure that this vital information is passed from generation to generation. God knows clearly how quickly true teachings can be forgotten if not frequently prioritized. How great is God's annual Holy Day plan that teaches us these important lessons and provides our children with this vital information. Tenth Plague, verse 29, At midnight the Lord kills all the firstborn of Egypt and great mourning begins in Egypt. Verse 35-36, to As God had prophesied, the Israelites plunder the Egyptians and leave Egypt with wealth, gold-slash-silver, as well as fine clothing. It's interesting to me that here on this first holy day of God's great feast season, in less than a day, pass over to first day of ULB, that Israel went from poverty to wealth. I have no idea if they adorned themselves with any of their new fine clothing, but I wonder if it made this feast day all the more special. Verse 37, this verse tells us that Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth. John Gill's commentary states simply, Ramesses was a place in Goshen, or rather the land of Goshen, from whence the country was so called. He continues, the latter place is so called by anticipation, for it was now a desert, as Josephus says, which he calls Latopolis, but had its name sucketh from the children of Israel pitching their tents there, for the word signifies tents or tabernacles. Verse 38, regarding this mixed multitude, John Gill's commentary states, Some of these were Egyptians, and some of other nations that had resided in Egypt, and who, on various accounts, might choose to go along with the children of Israel. Some threw intermarriages with them, being loath to part with their relations. See Lev underscore 2010, others on account of religion, being proselytes of righteousness, and others through worldly interest, the land of Egypt being by the plagues a most desolate place, and such wonders being wrought for the children of Israel, they saw they were a people that were the favorites of heaven, and judged it safest and best and most for their interest to keep with them. End. Verse 41 to 430 years from the time God called Abraham out of his own type of Egypt, land of yore, and God promised to make Abraham a great nation, see Genesis 12. Verse 42, here is a short one-page statement on this night to be much observed. Verse 44, every male had to be circumcised to be able to take of the Passover. This was the symbol that a male had entered into a covenant relationship with God. If a new family wanted to partake in this Passover festival, all their males had to be first circumcised. Later, God's holy word teaches that in the New Testament, 
circumcision is no longer an outward sign, but one of the heart, Rom 2.29, but he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not from men but from God. Now, when someone is convicted of their sins and the need to both repent and be forgiven of those sins, they are baptized and receive God's Holy Spirit as the sign of being His people. These are the individuals who are now in a covenant relationship with God. Compare Acts 2 to 3739 and Rom 8 to 9, 14. This is why only baptized members are allowed to keep the New Testament Passover today. Verse 46, again, understanding that this lamb represented Jesus Christ, not any of its bones were to be broken. Compare John 1933, 36, verse 49, God doesn't have two different set of rules for different people.